a lot happened since uh, uh, three days ago when I made my video talking about the first allegations of I'm Alex, where he was essentially exposed with a huge Google document, 82 pages of his ex-girlfriend with a whole bunch of text messages and even videos of him verbally abusing her and then eventually would accuse him of actually physically abusing her. And since then, we've gotten a few more accusations made towards him, some with evidence, some without evidence, some that you have to take with a grain of salt because of the person making the allegations, and another that just continues to keep showing the repeat pattern of behavior that Alex is displaying with his relationships. So the first one that we're going to start with is from King Annie, and King Annie is someone who is actually kind of very important, but mainly because of the fact that she had a lot of involvement with the slides of situation that I talked about in my last video that Alex had crusaded and talked about before and basically ruined his relationship with Slazo and completely accused him of committing terrible actions against someone who was a minor, even though Slazo was also a minor at the time. Let's read a little bit of Annie's uh, Google document that she made a few days ago, and it's says, though we never confirmed it to the public because I personally like keeping my relationships private, I dated Alex from June 2017 until March 2018. It was the most toxic relationship I've ever been in and I was lucky to get out when I did. When we were dating, though he was from London and I lived in America, we were pretty much never apart for longer than a week. We stayed in Europe for a couple of months then went back to America for six months. He couldn't stay six months straight due to visa implications, so he stayed three months, flew back to England for a few days, then and came back to America for another three months. After six months was over, he couldn't come back to America again for a while due to visa requirements. We spent much time away from each other, and during that time, with help of my friends, I came to the realization that I was in the worst and most toxic relationship I had ever been in, and I had get and I had to get out. It started out great, as they always do. The honeymoon phase, as they call it. But as time went on, things just got worse and worse. I was fortunate to get out when I did. But reading all the new information that came out, he's clearly gotten worse. So basically, just the entire Google document that King Annie has released is basically just confirming a lot of repeat pattern of behaviors that the last person who came out with accusations had stated in her Google document, which was Alice. And yeah, it just seems like the heat is just known for a lot of verbal abuse, saying that he is going to hurt them, that he's going to uh, kill them as well. And we're going to get into the next uh, set of allegations where he just continues that pattern of behavior even more of just trying to, to talk about how he wants to like kill the person that he's with, which is insane. But he, she also talks about a little bit of the Slaza situation. So towards the bottom of like the first like part of the Google document, the first page. For example, the Slaza situation, though it was never said in the original statements by Che, he somehow came to the conclusion that it was sexual assault and everyone else got the blame for saying his words. Somehow the situation went from being guilty of being a bad boyfriend to all of a sudden he's a rapist. This was the final nail in the coffin and I cut all contact with him after that. Which is very strange and insane to think about considering the fact that she still has her statements saying of uh, doubling down on the accusations that were made against Lazo at the time. Wavy Web Surf even says that you can't just slink out of this and Nicholas Diorio makes a reference to a tweet that she had made at the time saying innocent people don't stay silent for this long. Yeah, it just seems so strange that she didn't agree with these allegations being made against him. She didn't agree that Slazo was guilty of committing sexual assault, yet she and many other creators still decided to go ahead and side with Alex, and side with the victim, quote unquote, and went with the narrative that he was a rapist, which is which is insane to think about considering the fact that we now know what we now know, which is that Slaza didn't actually do anything and that they were just lies made about him. Let's talk about the next situation though, and this is by Jess, Jess Carter on Twitter. And the statement says, from November 2018 to February 2020, I was in an on and off relationship with Alex as everyone else seems to experience the first few months up to a year or as you expect with a brand new relationship. I can't speak much now as four years later I have suppressed these memories and don't tend to think back on that time. I had made a statement in 2020 for my own personal closure and didn't expect it to go anywhere but just exist. I really wanted to reach out to someone but I knew I didn't have the evidence because I deleted our messages to try and get over the breakup. I've included my original statement alongside a Facebook message between Alex and my friend during an insomnia event where he thought I wasn't in our hotel room 
room, he left to go see Slazo before the accusations, and I had woken up to the banging at the door to said friend showing me this message and saying Alex was looking for me. I was in the bed next to him, he just hadn't bothered to look. When confronted, he laughed about it, and I told him to never say that about me again. While I'm thankful I'm now in a position where my current partner has helped me heal through the damage, Alex caused my heart breaks for Alice, having gone through so much worse and still dealing with the consequences. She deserves nothing but peace and happiness here on out. Nothing she has done will justify his actions. And let's go ahead and just look at the tweet, or uh, the messages that were sent towards Jess at the time. Uh, where's Jess? For fuck's sake, I'm very angry at Barr. Uh, I'm gonna kick her head in, now I'm locked out, might kill her, might actually kill her, and then a mysterious audio call that we have no idea what it says, because this was back in 2019, so yeah, Alex just is just continuing this pattern of behavior with verbal abuse, uh, threatening to hurt someone in some way, and although we don't have more messages from Jess because she, as she said, has deleted them, it's not hard to believe of what we know from just one victim, that being Alice, that he's possibly guilty of committing a whole lot of others. So reading a little bit of her previous statement that she had written back in December of 2020, specific names won't be mentioned, but most can assume anyway. Whoever is currently in a relationship where your partner is heavily one-sided, guilt trips you and puts you down, please get out. I know it's hard to think of wanting to leave, but I can assure you it's for the best. So yeah, already kind of just starts with something that Alex pretty much does all the time in his relationships from what we can tell from previous statements. He likes to guilt trip his, his partners into coming back to either live with him again or be with him again and etc cetera, etc cetera, even though he's like as thick as a fucking stick and I don't understand how anyone can actually take anything abuse from him because he's just not threatening in any way whatsoever. Continuing to read the statement though. The start of my last relationship was everything I had wanted at the time. I was already living my best life so things were only improving. The guy was super lovely and sweet to me. Always cared and went the extra mile but something changed not long into the relationship. So yeah. Again, just it continues on like this previous statements made beforehand. Like the, the relationship started out great. He was the best guy in the world. He, he was super sweet and kind and caring and, and loved me with all his heart and all of a sudden something changed. At the drop of a fucking hat, just something changed. Completely turned over to the dark side and just, I don't know, just so somehow he just became an entirely different person. And I think that's really funny, but also obviously it's like, that's not funny because this person went through a bad experience with someone who, she even says herself that she actually loved him. I don't know what the fuck he's doing to make these women fall in love with him, but whatever, I guess. Continuing though, it was like he was always keeping things away from me, which is obvious you tell your partner. I mean, I would have in that situation. There came a time his ex came back into the picture and like everyone, I felt a horrible gut feeling when they met up. She ended up going to his flat and went out clubbing with him and some mates, all of which I had to find out through social media. Nothing from him I'd already made it apparent and made me uncomfortable them two being together but his response was i wasn't happy was i didn't think it was a big deal and i have to be with friends with her for work anything i'd say i was met with an excuse no sorry i didn't tell you next time or anything so i just had to push it push how i felt aside and watch them on calls every night and talk all the time. Shortly afterwards, he broke up with me as he was planning on moving elsewhere and he said the last six months were the worst of his life and how nothing good has happened. I was devastated and spent countless nights crying myself to sleep because of, at the time, I genuinely loved this guy and I do nothing for him and it hurt a lot that I couldn't make him happy. I made one tweet during the breakup that I saw a good looking guy in the gym and he flips out at me saying I'm a liar for telling him I'd wait for him and would only like him or and he doesn't ever want to be with me again. I broke down at work crying on the phone to him trying to apologize and say how genuine I was when I said I'd happily wait for him. All I did was make a tweet about about someone being attractive. He eventually he agreed to let me come and see him and we started back up again as he said he was sorry for getting angry because he just missed. He never moved in the end so I'm glad I had to experience those awful nights wondering why I wasn't good enough anymore for no reason. One night he went out and left his laptop with me. I looked through some messages and he was a lot closer with his ex than he let on. He would 
tell her his problems, but to me, he didn't want to drag me down or get me involved. He'd also message a girl complimenting her ass, but me tweeting someone was attractive was the end of the world. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm probably not going to read the whole thing for the video, but I'm going to go ahead and just read everything out for myself after I'm done recording. Yeah, I'm Alex. It's just a completely despicable, horrible, horrible human being. And I would go ahead and talk about the iNabber situation that happened. But honestly, that's an entirely different situation. And iNabber has already responded with his uh, own response. <laughs> I mean, fucking obviously, right? <laughs> I, I never has already made his own response to these allegations that were made towards him by an ex ex-girlfriend and from what I can tell he provided a lot of evidence proving his side of the story and proving that he didn't actually do the things that were being accused of him and his girlfriend didn't really seem to have anything that really supported anything that she was saying she was saying a lot of oh well, I never, Frazier was doing a lot of similar stuff that Alex was doing to me, so, uh, like, don't trust him because he's also a bad guy when really there's a lot of information that she either left out or she immediately backtracked it. So if you want to go see I never situation, uh, or his response to the situation that was brought up about him, I would highly recommend that you go do so. I'm probably going to read that in my own time. I'm not going to really talk about that in the video. I also kind of want to talk about some of the statements that were made from some of I'm Alex's friends, uh, some of the e-boys that he had a whole separate channel with. I mean, I'll talk about it a little bit. I'm not really going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to show you the messages that were shown or made by the people that are closely, closely associated with him. And basically what they say is they just, they knew rumors at the time of Alex doing something close to this type of behavior. But the most that they did was either they contacted an agency telling him to, telling them to drop him from the agency or they just didn't really know the full scale of what was actually going on and they didn't really believe any of the rumors that were going on at the time so the most that they did was just basically cut off contact from him and they stopped hanging out with him and they stopped being friends with him for a certain amount of time and they didn't really know the full scale of what had actually been going on until these allegations were just made about him so yeah, Alex is a completely despicable, horrible human being, and he does not deserve a platform, and there's no way he's going to come back. I'm probably going to still end up making another video of him responding to the allegations. If he even fucking ends up making that video, honestly, I don't see how he's going to do it, but I guess only time will tell. Because that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. If you want to see more of the responses from the people who came out with their allegations and their stories about I'm Alex and you want to read them for yourself, please go ahead and do so. I didn't do it in my last video, unfortunately, so I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to link the, the, the proper uh, responses in the description of the video, and I'm also going to leave them in a pinned comment in case you don't, whatever reason, fucking decide to check the description because people don't like to read. Uh, yeah, I'm going to link the stuff appropriate down into the description in the pinned comment of the video if you want to read everything for yourself. Uh, like I said, if you want to learn more about the I never situation, I think Pegasus ended up making a video and he like talked about it a little bit or he went through it himself. Or if you want to read it for yourself, obviously just go ahead and do that yourself and yada yada. Anyways, that's pretty much it for me. I don't have really much else to say. I'm going to go ahead and just get ready to play that Elden Ring DLC. So yeah, anyways, um, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe and please turn on bell notifications so you don't miss another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.